Shalom. Bear with me for a minute, please. The subject is dealing with slavery and why will you go into slavery? I'm not going to say anything else because we're not going into slavery anymore. But uh, this is the article that I came across. Let's see where the spirit takes me. It says, all, after all, didn't America invent slavery? I kind of read through it. I think slavery is a good topic for tonight, don't you think? Uh, if you think that's, uh, this, I'm going to breeze through this. If you, if you think that, if you think the title, the title's question is silly, you're right, but here's the problem. Increasing numbers of, numbers of college students today would uh, un, unhesitantly respond, hell yeah, to the, qu to the query or the question. Could it be because that is what they are being taught? Yeah, the question concerning America. After all, didn't America invent slavery? Uh, no, it didn't. But it mastered slavery. You know, pass all of this. I'm gonna go right into the, some of the meat of this article. They said that supporting this uh, deceptive. Uh, because incomplete history of slavery comes the New York Times, whose uh, 1619 project advertises that it now aims to reframe the country's history, understanding 1619 as our true founding. Yeah, but America became great really before that. You got you got to talk about uh, Columbus coming to the Americas, so we can go as far back as uh, the fourteen ninety two. So we're talking fourteen ninety two, fifteen ninety two. We're talking about a hundred years plus. That got they got well into. The whole slave thing. This is what made Rome great. This is what made Egypt great. Uh, this is what made America great and Europe great and you Edomites great. The fact that you took people that are not your nation and, and enslaved them. And I mean, it, it only makes sense. You want to build something, you want to use as little overhead as you possibly can. So what they did was they made them build, build things, clean things, do whatever, cook food, take care of your children, go to wars, in the fear that you're going to be put to death or whipped. And this was a horrible thing that took place. We as, uh, and this is something that Edomites don't even want to talk about. Even Jake, Jake doesn't want to even talk about it. It, it was so horrific taking somebody and uh, putting them in a, uh, a shack, giving them just enough food so they can live. And uh, then they would get up early, in the, as early as, they, as the mass would, would uh, put them or, or wake them up. They would be out there all day. They'd work them literally to death. And that's a harsh thing to deal with. And the question is now, 
pursuant to the scriptures. The scriptures say, he that leadeth into captivity, that's a, a go-to scripture, Revelation 13. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. So the question is, you as a people put us in slavery, and you might jump up and say, well, those are my foreparents. That wasn't me. Well, how do you know it wasn't you? There's a thing called reincarnation. That's also biblical. That's something that these Christians don't want to deal with. They don't want to deal with the question of reincarnation because re in reincarnation, you're dealing with the past. You might have been a good person, but who were you in a previous life? Who were you a thousand years ago? What did you do a thousand years ago? That's why you got to deal with the subject of reincarnation in the Bible. And reincarnation is biblical. So you're going to have to go into slavery based upon the fact of what your people did or what you did in another life. You're going to have to pay for that. It said, Ames, let me get this back. It says, uh, 1619 Project advertise, advertises that it, that it now aims to reframe the country's history, understanding 1619 as a true founding. Yeah, that's when you, as Americans, not Europeans, but as Americans, be, begin to become great through slavery. It's a hard pill to swallow, but you're going to have to swallow it. You're going to have to swallow it. That's your future. It's all no more gravy for you devils. It's going to be uphill for y'all st starting now, and it's going to be downhill for us. It's going to be a coast. We're going to be on the top and you're going to be on the bottom. And you still haven't admitted that you're Edomites. They always get stupid with the Edomites. Oh, the Edomites. The Edomites are done away with. Oh, we don't know what an Edomite looked like. What the hell is an Edomite? I don't know what an Edomite is. An Edomite? Are they aliens? What, are, what is an Edomite? You can go and ask so-called white people on the street, do your street interviews, Ask them who an Edomite is. They, they're, they're, they're clueless because Esau is not going to teach their people that they're Edomites. Because if they taught them that they were Edomites, they would have to teach them that uh, you're going to have to pay for what you did against your brother Jacob. It says, why 1619? Because uh, it says the times, it is the date of a... Um, Arrival of the first slaves to the land that would that would a century and a half later be called the United States. Because America's true founding, America's true founding, America's, let me say it again, America's true founding arose out of slavery. This is for mag magazine. This institution is the key to understanding America's uniqueness as a country and culture. You're great. You became great because of slavery. You became great because you didn't want to get up off your ass and work. You took people and enslaved them. And the scriptures say, you, if you put somebody in slavery, you have to go into slavery. If you enslave somebody, you have to be enslaved. If you kill people, you have to be killed. If you stole people, those people shall steal from you. And you did it to the greatest people in the universe. Not the earth, but the universe. You did it to the children of the Most High.
So you got you, you got to answer. Okay, it says, of course, it is important to study the history of slavery in this country. But what if America was not unique in holding slaves? It, it's not unique in holding slaves. That's why we're going to hold you in, as slaves. This is Esau trying to ease the pain of the Edomites. It ain't so bad. We, we, we're not the worst people in the world because slavery happened before America. It says, what? Let me read that again. But what if America was not unique in holding slaves? What if America didn't invent slavery as our students have come to think? And I would just Google it error the answers to these questions, though apparently not provided by some universities, are easily found on the website freetheslave.net. Look at that later. Reading it should be your first step toward learning the full fact about slavery worldwide. It says, in, it says in pursuing the free, the free to slave website, I'm sorry, perusing the free to slave website, <coughs> the first fact that emerges is it was nearly 9,000 years ago that slavery first appeared in Mesopotamia uh, 6800 BC. Enemies captured in war were commonly kept by the conquering country as slaves. Yep, yeah, we're, we're, we're talking, uh, we're talking, uh, 9,000 years ago, 8,000 years ago, 7,000 years ago. And, and it goes on. Slavery never gets old. Slavery never goes out of fashion. So in our kingdom, you know, according to Vocab, we're going to all live equally, all the nation, the body of believers. No, that's bullshit. If you're an Edomite, you're going to be a slave. If you're an Ishmaelite, you're going to be a slave. If you're a Hamite, you're going to be a slave. A Moabite, an Ammonite, you're going to be a slave. Now, Esau is going to catch the most hell. Because you're the worst of the nations, pursuant to the scriptures. It says in in. It says, and in the 1700s, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and in the 1700s BC, the Egyptians, the Egyptian pharaohs, enslaved the Israelites. So the new thing now is, oh, there's no such thing as Israelites. Israelites never existed. Well, who did the Egyptians enslave? You know, you got this uh, black consciousness movement. You know, you know, you got uh, Sarnetta and others, and they want to involve us in their debates. We have nothing to do with no Israelite should have anything to do with these guys because they're not on the same page. You should only get with guys that are on that you're on the same page with. Like I'm gonna tell them guys, and they're gonna eventually realize that they're Israelites. No, they don't wanna be an Israelite, man. They wanna be Hamites. And I wish they can become Hamites so they can taste what the, the true Hamites are gonna taste. You know, we're at a point now where we don't give a fuck about you niggas that are not of the elect. We're not concerned about you. 
I have nothing to say to you. I have. I don't want to hear what you got to say. I ain't got nothing to tell you. Now, at first, you're going to tell Jake that, they, that they're Jake, that they're Israelites. If they buck up, you work with them. If they continue to buck up, you work with them until you get tired of dealing with them and you hope that they walk their punk asses down the street. Real talk. We're not going to be friendly. We're not going to get with Sardinetta or any of them other guys and have a discussion. We ain't got nothing to say to y'all. If you can't, if you couldn't get it the first time or even the second time, we can't help you. It says in, in the uh, 17, 1700s BC, the Egyptian pharaohs enslaved the Israelites. The Israelites. You know what I'm gonna do? Let me do this. Let me let me let me let me take Egyptian pharaohs enslaved the Israelites. And let me go here. Kaboom. You see what happens. Okay, let me go to images. Okay, here comes Esau with the bullshit. Here comes Esau with the bullshit. The Egyptians are white. There goes Esau with this fucking bullshit. Oh, those are the slaves. They're all, they all, all look like Edomites. Esau is a master liar. Let me see something here. Let's see this here. Esau always wants to control the narrative. No, the Egyptians were white. And the slaves, the Israelites were white as well. Let me come back. Oh boy, oh boy, look at this, look at this crap. See, Esau gotta keep this goddamn lie going. Now this shit ain't popping up the hell. Okay, here's a good one. All right, let me see something there. This don't wanna come out now. Oh boy, I hope you can see this, but nothing, nothing, nothing. Look at this crap, look at this nonsense. Those are the Israelites, all a bunch of Edomites. Okay, boom, boom. Now we're cooking with grease. You see the uh, Egyptians, which are so-called black people. And then you see uh, the slaves, which are Israelites. Here's some more bullshit. There's some more bullshit. Edomites, a bunch of Edomites that keep that damn lie going. Here it goes again. This is Esau controlling the narrative. Oh, those are all Israelites, and look what they look like. Your lies are catching up to you. They kind of made them look like Arabs. Damn, Edomite. There's an Edomite. Another Edomite. Fucking lying devils, man. You fucking lying devils. Okay, this is evidence of Hebrew slaves in Egypt. Black history. So let's click on that. And you could clearly see that they're people of color. Well, 
were slaves treated unfair by their own masters. Let's click on this. That's an Egyptian. And these are the slaves which were Israelites. More slaves of the Egyptians. And these were Israelites. There's another painting, image, Frisco, icon, whatever you want to call it. It says in, coming back to this article, Okay, it says, and in the 1700s BC, the Egyptian pharaohs enslaved the Israelites. So I just showed you a couple of pictures of what the Israelites look like and what the Egyptians look like. As it discussed in Exodus 20, chapter 21, later, the pagan Greeks participated in slavery. Who did they enslave? The Israelites. All you got to do is go to uh, 1 Maccabees 1 and read that whole chapter. For ancient Sparta, as well as Athens, relied fully on the slave labor of captives. But Greek slavery paled in comparison to that in ancient Rome. What does it say in Matthew 11? It says, uh, the, the kingdom suffers violence and the violent, and the violent take it by force. From the, the, from the, time, of, from the time of John the Baptist till, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent, violence and the violent take it by force. That's when the Romans took down the Edomite Romans as opposed to the uh, Japhetic Romans. When you go to the Apocrypha and you read the account of the Maccabees, these were, uh, when they made a pact with the, uh, the Romans, the Romans at that time were Japhic. Those were not Edomites, man. Esau came up in there later. I said, but Greece, but Greek slavery uh, paled in comparison to that in ancient Rome. According to historian Mark Cartwright, uh, slavery was an ever-present feature of the Roman world. That's why the Roman world became so great during that time period, because everybody that they took over, they enslaved, meaning they did a thing called tribute, meaning they didn't necessarily put everybody in slavery. They um they 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 would hit you with a, a tax, a tribute. So they said you can have your land, you can have your religion, you can do this, you can do that, as long as we get a percentage of what you profit from. And that's what that's what goes on here in this country. The, the uh, origins of this country is they took down these uh, the so-called Indian tribes, and then they went over to the Africans, West Africa mainly, and gathered us up, put us on cargo slave ships, and then sold us on auction blocks, and that's how they became rich. And it was a racist thing because it was Edom, so-called white people that enslaved so-called black people to, to make this place great. Remember, the less uh, less overhead, no overhead. You don't got to pay your people. Give them a little bit, put them in a damn shack, put some old old ass clothes on them, give them just enough food and water so they can wake up to work the next day, and that's it. So you you gotta you gotta be you gotta go into slavery now. You gonna you gonna have to go into slavery. It says, but Greek 
slavery pale in comparison to, to that in, in ancient Rome. According to the historian uh, Mark Car uh, Cartwright, slavery was an ever present feature of the Roman world in which as many as one in three of the population in Italy or on or one in five across the empire, the Roman empire, was slaves. What does it say? One, one in five, 20% of the population were in hardcore slavery. The rest of them had to pay tribute. So they were all slaves. It says, uh, it says oh, one in five across the empire were slaves and upon this foundation of forced labor was built the entire edif edifice, edifice meaning a building of the Roman state and society. So Rome became great off of the backs, the blood shed, the, 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 the tears, the sweat of Israelites and other nations. And those were Edomites. The Romans were direct descendants of Esau, or they descended from Esau. And reparations is not going to get it. If they said, okay, each Jake will get a $10 million, that would be considered an insult. Okay, what about $100 million? $100 million is good. But, you know, you physically fucked us up. So we got to physically fuck you up. We got to see your ass sweating, bleeding, running, hiding, crying. And we're going to have to take your women too. Do, do a thing called uh, a con concubine. Concubinism, if that's a word. It says, uh, it says as many as one in three of the population or one in five across the empire were slaves and upon this foundation of forced labor was built the entire, and, and, and see, you did this in Rome and you did this in America. We went into slavery as soon as we could, as soon as a baby could walk, and pick up things, they went right in this. Ain't this a bitch? Yeah, you here you got a baby that's three, four years old. The baby's trying to learn how to speak, and you got and you got him picking shit up. But but when we call you this the devil, you got a problem with that. And upon this foundation of forced labor was built the entire edifice of the Roman state and society. By the eighth century AD, African, almost lost my spot here. Here we go. By the eighth century AD, African slaves were being sold to Arab households. So Ishmaelites, you got to go into slavery too. And a Muslim, and this was during the time of the 8th century AD. In a Muslim world that at the time spanned from Spain to Persia, by the year 1000 AD, slavery had become common in Eng England's rural agricultural economy. So, you know, they tell you, oh, the English helped to free the slave. Motherfucker, the English was enslaving Jake too. Got a lot to pay for, man. Better is the end of the thing than the beginning thereof. With the poor yoking them themselves to their to their own, to their landowners through a form of debt bondage. And we're all in fucking debt. 
the debt is getting ready to hit 30. The national debt is getting ready to hit 30 trillion. It's really more like 230 trillion. What you gonna have to pay for. You know the term, the straw that broke the camel's back? Well, the straw that already broke the camel's back, the camel's fucking dead. They put the straw on top of a dead camel. I'll be surprised if this, if this motherfucker goes to, to, to 2023. Too much shit is going on. There needs to be a change and there will be a change. And your how about Shami how Shai is going to change it. You got to go. And you nonchalant Jake's out there. Fuck you. Okay, it says it goes on to say, let me catch, let me catch my uh At about the same time, the number of slaves captured in Germany grew so large that their nationality became the generic term for uh, uh, slaves, which is Slavs. As for the Atlantic slave trade, this began in 1444 AD. When Portuguese Edomites, Portuguese traders, brought the first large number of slaves from Africa to Europe, those were Israelites. So, we hey, the scriptures say we scattered literally all over the planet Earth, and that's true. You're gonna have Jakes looking like Edomites. You're gonna have Jakes looking like Moabites. You're gonna have Jakes looking like Arabs. Damn. It said Portuguese, which are Edomites. It goes on to say, it said, a Portuguese uh, a traders brought the first large number of slaves from Africa. What part of Africa? The, the west coast of Africa. To Europe. That's why you got Jake's all throughout Europe, all in England, all in Portugal all over the place. And they're waking up too. 82 years later, 1526, Spanish, which are Edomites, ex explorers brought the first American slaves to settlements in what would become the United States. A fact, a fact that the times gets wrong. The Times like, likewise fails to mention that the Native American Cherokee Nation also held African slaves. Well, they're our brothers, so you know you have laws on that. That's that's kind of putting a band-aid on East. So don't worry, it was Cherokee Indians that enslaved Jake. It was also these Indians that accepted Jake into their into their families too. And even sided with the uh, Confederation during the Civil War because they were, they were acting as Toms. Very interesting. Okay, I hope I didn't lose my spot. Let me see where I'm at. Okay, it says Native American uh, Cherokee Nation also held African slaves and even sided with the Confederacy during the Civil War. But the antip antipathy of many Americans towards slavery became evident as 
early as 1775. Remember, George Washington, I believe he had over 300 slaves. And they got statues of this devil up to this day. When Quakers in Pennsylvania set up the first abolitionist society, it said Betsy Ross, uh, whose American flag was deemed politically incorrect recently by Knight, was herself both a Quaker and an abolish, uh, abolish, abolitionist, and abolitionist, excuse me, to give me. Five years later, Matt, uh, Massachusetts became the first state to abolish slavery in its constitution. Okay, so that was the North. That was way up in the North. That was way past New York. So they said, well, slavery only exists in the South. Well, wait a minute. They abolished slavery uh, uh, up in up in uh, in Mass, so that means they had slaves up north too. They had slaves up in New York. They had auctioning blocks in New York on Wall Street. Payback is a bitch. It says so seven years after that, 1787, the U.S. Congress passed the uh, Northwest Ord Ordinance of uh, 1787 outlawing slavery in, in the uh, Northwest Territories. But Jake still caught hell. Jake is still catching hell today. In 1803, Denmark, Norway became the first uh, country in Europe to ban the African slave trade in uh, 1807, three weeks before uh, Britain abolishes the Atlantic slave trade. President Jefferson signed a law prohibiting the importation of slaves into any port or place within the jurisdiction of the United States. Jefferson's uh, uh, action followed Article 1, Section 9 of the Constitution. That's Congress, Article 1. Bear with me for a minute. Let me. Okay. Let me bring it back. Okay, we're, we're back here. In 1820, Spain abolished the slave trade south of the equator, but preserved it in Cuba until 1888. Because you had Jake, you had Judah, you had uh, Latin, some of the Latin tribes down there in Cuba. You ever watch the uh, Cuban national boxing team? They're, they're all Jake. They're all Jake. It says in 1834, the, the abolish, the Abol abolition act, excuse me, abolished slavery throughout the British empire, including British coloni colo colonies in North America. In 1847, France, would abolish the slavery in all its uh, colonies. That's France. The French people had slaves. These French Edomites had slaves. They were Jake. So when you read uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, that applies to us, man. You know, this clown uh, vocab wants to say, oh, that, that slavery wasn't so bad. You know, you learn, man, get the fuck out of here, man. We're, the fuck, the, the, the fact that we, uh, 
became slaves proves that we're the Israelites, man. We were enslaved in the Egyptian empire. We were enslaved in the Greek empire. We were enslaved in the Roman empire. And we were enslaved among these different European groups. But we ain't the Israelites. We ain't the Israelites, man. Fuck out of here. Why do we excel in everything that we do? Because we're the Israelites. Greatest people on the planet. We dominate. The word dom dominate comes from the word domain, which means lordship. We dominate. Michael jo Jordan dominated because he's a lord. Kobe Bryant dominated because he's a, a lord. I remember the game where he played, he, they played, it was the Lakers, and I believe it was the Raptors. And I think this, if you put it in the thing, I, I, I think it was 80 points plus. This man was on fire. Why? Because he's an Israelite. It says, uh, let me read this, this again. In 1834, the Abolition Act abolished slavery throughout the British Empire, including British colonies in North America. In 1847, France would abolish slavery in all its colonies. Brazil followed in 1850. Because who, who was running Brazil? You did the Edomites, man. They were enslaving Jake. And you got a lot of Judites down there in Brazil. This is your history, ladies and gentlemen. It says here, closer to home, in 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing, and they were never free. They were never free. When you're free, you go back to where you, if, if, if I go to China and kidnap somebody from China and bring them to America and work them as a slave. When they're free, what do they do? They go back to China and they get reparations. So we were never free. Fuck all that. We were not never free. That's why they had to use this fancy word emancipation proclamation. Emancipate means, means to hand over. So what did uh, Lincoln do? 1863. He handed over the slaves of the South and gave them to the US. So Lincoln didn't free no goddamn body. If that was the case, they would have said he freed the slaves. He didn't free nobody. He emancipated them, he handed them over. said freeing all U.S. slaves in states that had seceded from the Union, except those in conf Confederate areas already controlled by the Union Army. This was followed in 1865 by the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution outlawing slavery. Okay, now let me, let me look that up. Let me go to the 13th Amendment. Show you that you wouldn't, that you're not free. U.S. Constitution, 13th Amendment, let's click on this. Okay, it says, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude. What does that mean? That means if you volunteer to be a slave, you're a slave. 
except, except as a punishment for crime. Meaning if you commit a certain crime, they can enslave your ass. When they lock your ass up and they make you make uh, uh, license plates, that's, that's because of a crime that they deem that you did. It said, except as a punishment of, of for crime, where are the where of the party shall have been duly convicted. In other words, you went through a trial and all that, and they always they always uh, give you a deal. They'll say, look, you're facing 25 years, but if you plea out, you get five, and you know you didn't do it, but you're scared because you don't want to, you know, go to go to trial and then blow trial. And, and then have to do 25. So that's what they do to a lot of Jake. So an, another reason why you Edomites, you're gonna get fucked up in the kingdom is it shall exist. And how, and what crime did this Negro commit? Did he steal something? Well, why did he steal something? Because he'd been a slave all his life and he was supposed to get reparations and he never got reparations. So he was forced to steal. Motherfucker. Pretty good article. It says uh, 13th Amendment to the US Constitution outlawing, outlawing slavery, not outlawing slavery. They, they didn't outlaw slavery. You read it. They said if you volunteer to be a slave, you join the military, guess what? You become a slave for, what is it, seven years? So you sign that paper, sign the contract, big boy, sign the contract, and you're bound by, the, first of all, they're gonna shave your beard off or you can't have a beard. You don't have to give you a jaw head, a, a, a jaw head haircut. You're gonna, you're gonna eat what we tell you to eat. You're gonna go to sleep when we tell you to go to sleep. We're gonna, you're gonna get up when we tell you to get up. We, if we tell you to kill that, that that Arab over there, you got to kill him. You a slave, boy. Ain't no reason for Jake to be in this military. And all you Jakes in the military that stays in the military, you're going to take that MOTB. Very good article. It says the 20th century would would see emancipation. Now we know what that means. It means to hand over, come to a Sierra Leone, a Saudi Arabia, India, and Yemen. In 1964, the this, this Sixth World Muslim Congress, the world's oldest Muslim organization, pledged global support for all anti-slavery movements because you know you got people in slavery right hardcore slavery right now there's people uh was that libya that you had uh nigerians that would go to work in libya and they would wind up being sold on the auction block and uh iuic should go over there man if they're really for their people they ain't for their people in 1990 they don't even speak about that man It says uh, in 1990, after its adoption by the 54 nations in the 1980s, the 19th Congress of Foreign Ministers of the organization, organization of the Islamic Conference formally adopted the Cairo Declaration on Human Rights in Islam. And this is the 90s, man. They say, we got to do something to, to save these slaves which states that human beings are born free. This is in 1990. And no one has the right to enslave humanity, uh, uh, hum enslave, humiliate, uh, 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 oppress, or exploit them. The last country to abolish slavery was Mauritania.
I'm in the middle of doing a show. I'll call you right back. No problem, Shalom. And that was uh, Apostle Ryan Blob. I called him. He just called him back. So I'm almost finished anyway. It says, so they put this article together to let you know you just can't, you just can't, you know, piss on America, man. Because we, we were the only ones that put people in slavery. Let me jump down, then I'm going to get ready to close. And have your precepts ready. We already know the precepts is in mind. Uh, ex, what is that? Exodus uh, 21, verse 16. Uh, of course, uh, Isaiah, uh, um, Isaiah 14 and 1, 1 and 2. I'm going to close on that. So slavery is coming back in a big way. It says, even this thumbnail sketch of the history of slavery is enough to re rebut the New York Times uh, 1619 project. No, slavery is not primarily an American phenomenon. It has existed worldwide. And no, America didn't invent slavery, but they mastered it. <laughs> that happened more than 9,000 years ago. Finally, slavery did not end in the world with the passage of the 13th Amendment. There, were, there are 40 million people enslaved even today. And slavery is, is not going to die. In our kingdom, everybody's going to be our slaves. So I'm going to close with this. Isaiah 14. We already know all the precepts on slavery. There's a bunch of them. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. That's talking about the strangers, talking about other Israelites, waking up to the fact that they're Israelites by others knowing that they're Israelites and telling them that they're Israelites. Second verse, and the people shall take them and bring them in their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, slaves, and they shall take them captives, whose captive they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord Yahweh shall give thee rest who the Israelites from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. That thou should have taken up this parable against the king of Babylon, which who's the current king of Babylon? Biden. And say, how have the oppressors ceased, the golden city ceased? The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruleth the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth in the singing. So everybody's going to be happy when this man goes down and he's getting ready to go down. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say shalom. On to the next one.